Hi, welcome to another video in my series on using sigma notation to sum linear functions. Now in the previous video what we looked at was these three results here. And if you're unsure of these results you can always go back on my website and have a look under summing series sigma notation. Anyway, assuming that you're familiar with these I've got three more examples where we extend these ideas. You can see that in this first example I've got the sum of sigma, sum of r going from 20 to 45 of 3r. Notice it doesn't start from 1, so that's the reason why I've picked this example. And then in number 2 here we've got to sum 5r minus 4, r going from 1 to 2n. Two big n here, so it's not the n that you've got up there. And in the third example, it's kind of a combination of these two actually, where I've got to sum 2r minus 3, r going from 10 to n squared. So you, if you feel that you can have a go at these, do pause the video. I strongly encourage you to have a go at them anyway and come back when ready, check your answers, or if you're still unsure, you can always just see the work solutions. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, for the first one, we'll first of all use the rule that we can pull out the constant here, 3, in front of the summation sign. So, We'll put the 3 there and then we've got the sum sigma r going from 20 to 45 of r. So I can do this now as 3 times. Now when we've got r going from a number other than 1, we would do the summation or sigma of r going from 1 to the n number here, the top number, which in this case is 45, and then we would subtract the sum of r going from 1 to the number before 20. In this case it would be 19. And then we just close that bracket off there. So we've got three times that result. So when you've got these ones that don't start from 1, they go from some number to a number up here, just go from 1 to the top number and then subtract 1 to the value below this, the integer below whatever you've got here. Okay, now we can use this result here. So if we do that, we're going to have 3 multiplied by, and then for the first one, sum of r going from 1 to 45 is going to be n over 2, n plus 1, where n is going to be the 45. So it's going to be 45 over 2 multiplied by 45 plus 1. And then for the second term here, the sum of r going from 1 to 19, n is going to be 19, so it's going to be n over 2, 19 over 2, multiplied by n plus 1, 19 plus 1. And if you work that out, what it comes to is 2535. Okay, so with number 2 now, we've got r going from 1 to to 2n. Uh, so you can see it's going to be different now from just n. So to sum something like this up, we use this rule over here. This will be equal to 5 times the sum of r, r going from 1 to 2n. And then we've got minus the sum of 4 also going from 1 to 2n. Now for the first term here we're using this but n is now 2 big n. 
So we've just got to replace the n with two big N. So we've got five then multiplied by, instead of n over two, we've got two big N over two. And then it's multiplied by two big N plus one. Two big N plus one. And then for the minus four, sum between r is one to two n, then we're using this concept here. Only this time, instead of it being n times b, it's going to be two n times b. So we've got minus two n, and the b value is the four. So we've just got to clean this up now. We can see that these two twos cancel one another out, just leaving us with n. And then if we do that, that's going to be 5n multiplied by 2n plus 1, and then minus 8n. And if we expand the bracket, we're going to get 10n squared, and then we get 5n minus that 8n is going to be minus 3n. You could factorise that if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's that one. So I hope you were able to get that if you did have a go. So let's just come down here now and we'll try this one. And I said earlier that this seems to be a combination of these two ideas. Notice it doesn't start at one again. So to do this, what we've got to do is just simply sum this for r going from one to the top value, n squared, of 2r minus 3. And then from that, we need to subtract the summation of 2r minus 3, going from r equals 1 to the number just below this, the integer below that, which in this case would be 9. OK, now the next thing is to break this up using this rule here. And if we do that, we're going to pull the 2 out the front of the sigma. So we've got 2 sigma r, r going from 1 to n squared. And then we've got minus sigma of 3. That also goes r from 1 to n squared. And now we've got this one here which is going to be minus 2, if we pull the 2 out, 2 sigma r, r going from 1 to 9. Let's just put that in a big square bracket here. And then minus sigma of 3, and that's going r from 1 all the way up to 9. And let's just close that bracket off. So, if we take the first term here, we're going to be using this formula up here, only n is now going to be replaced with the n squared. So we've got the 2 on the outside, and then we've got what would have been n over 2 is now n squared over 2, n squared over 2. And then it's going to be n plus 1, but it's now n squared plus 1 instead of the n plus 1, n squared plus 1. And then for the sum of 3, going for r equals 1 to n squared, we use this idea, so it's going to be n squared times 3. So put minus there, so it's minus, in fact, n squared times 3, or you could just write it as 3n squared. I haven't got much room here, so I'm going to take the next term here. We'll open up the bracket, so we'll have minus 2. We'll just put that down here. And then we've got the sum of r, r going from 1 to 9. So we've got n over 2, so that would be 9 over 2. So 9 over 2, multiplied by n plus 1, so that would be 9 plus 1. And then for this term, remember we've got minus minus here, so it's going to be a plus. And then we've got 9 times 3. So just put that in as 9 times 3. So if we simplify this now, for the first term, those two twos 
cancel one another out. And so do these two in this one here. And so what have we got? We've just got n squared times n squared plus 1. So if we expand that, we're going to have n to the power 4 plus n squared. And then we've got this term minus 3n squared. And then we've got minus 9 times 10, which is going to be minus 90. And then 9 threes are 27. Clean this up. And what we end up with is n to the power 4 then minus 2n squared minus 63. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea of how to go about tackling questions like this, where we haven't got it necessarily starting from 1, and also where our top value might not be just simply n. OK, now in the next tutorial, what I'll do is introduce you to sigma r squared, and then we'll go on to looking at sigma r cubes. And combining these summations together in more composite type series. So I hope you'll have a look at those if you think that this one has been useful to you. As, as I normally always say after my videos, generally the best place to look at all of my videos is on my website rather than looking on the YouTube channel because it's got indexes and if you're taking an exam there's a good chance that I'll have written out uh, an index for your examination board. All right.